the advanced energy RF X600, 600 watt RF generator, 13.56 megahertz frequency. Uh, the generator has simple front panel control board uh, with switches to turn on the power and RF off and there it turns on the RF and there are a few more switches uh, left to display we can select forward power true power and DC bias and right display also may be selected to measure various parameters such as reflected power, maximum power maximum power is the maximum power output of the generator which is adjustable by this power limit potentiometer here and this is a set point switch uh, this switch is uh, what just uh, when, you push, when pushing the switch, rotate the knob to adjust the set point to the desired level. Uh, a normal operation practice, we leave the left display displaying the forward power and the right display displaying the reflected power. Uh, this system can be selected for different uh, regulation modes, forward power or DC bias or load power. This is forward power, DC bias, and selecting both the switches will make it load power regulation mode. And the system is also possible, it is also possible to control the system from a remote control signal, using a remote signal so to the user interface port. Um, at this moment, this system is in a standalone mode, and the user port are of of the RF generator is connected to the ATX600 which is a, the auto matching network tuner module. Uh, the, the tuner module is powered from the matching network. The power to the matching network here is 208 single phase. And the knobs in the middle, the upper one is to select the forward power uh, that will indicate on a bar graph here or the tune position. And this is the manual set point button. And you can select the position using these. Uh, potentiometers and also the tuner can be positioned such that the, there are two capacitors one for the tune which is uh, uh, inside this automatic network and another one is a shunt one shunt one is parallel to the input power and the tune one is in series and there's a preset one and preset two and there are tiny little parts here where you can adjust the tune capacitor position and, and the shunt capacitor position so when the auto is not selected we can uh, by pushing this button momentary button it indicates the, the tune and shunt positions on the display. Also there is a push button here to select DC bias or noise display. So first thing uh, I'll turn on the RF power and you can notice that the forward power is about 125 watts and the reflected is 47 by adjusting the tune capacitor I'm able to reduce the reflected power way all the way down to 19 ohms 19 watts uh, the matching network is trying to simulate the chamber 
impedance matching the chamber has capacitive inductive and resistive loads so depending on the dimensions and size of the electrodes and the chamber size and the, and the medium in the chamber that is the reactive gases used uh, typically RF generator output is matched into a 50 ohm resistive load and I'm going to connect the resistive load directly to the generator Shows R of power. Okay, this indicates the forward power is 125 watts, and I'm increasing it. And the reflector power is way below 3 watts. As the power is directly connected to the dummy load, which is a 50 ohm resistive load. The matching network actually helps to get a similar result when the RF power is connected to the electrodes in a plasma chamber. A reactive ion etching or PECVD or any RF sputtering system. Is the maximum output of the generator 600 watts forward power? You can go higher. And I'm going to bring it down. Turn it off. And I'm going to connect the generator output to the matching network input. The tune position and the shunt position are about one third of the range distance. Now by pressing the auto button, the, the ATX 600 tries to match the impedance such that the reflected power is minimum. So with without auto position it is about 30 watts and it comes down to 17 watts reflected. Because I'm using the output of the matching network to go to the dummy load which is 50 watt fixed resistive load, the actual chamber electrodes would give a better lowest possible reflected power. This is how the matching network looks inside. It's the tune variable capacitor and underneath there there is a shunt capacitor. These are variable capacitors and there are two inductors this one is in series to the RF and there is another one which is parallel to the input power now this is the tune motor here and the shunt motor these motors are coupled through these belts to the capacitors and to, in order to get best results, after connecting it to the chamber, it, it may be necessary to decouple these motors. Either these are the two potentiometers; these are feedback potentiometers. 
this uh, give the position feedback to the electronic control module here for the ATX 600 matching network controller by loosening that screw we can rotate the part slightly or by removing the set screws on the coupling the belts can be adjusted in such a way that the capacitors are fully disengaged when when the position is the manually locate both the shunt and tune positioners all the way to the left hand side on the bar graph the capacitor should be disengaged fully and when they are when the position is all the way to the right hand side the capacitor should be completely engaged if they are not the way to adjust is by decoupling it over the coupling and rotating the motor manually to make it work <clears throat> this is a 50 pin connector which is to be connected to the ATX 600 and is the RF input connection and the RF output connector over here The 37 pin user port connector on the RF generator is connected to the 25 pin user remote connector on the ADX 600. And that helps to the, the signals uh, help to get the the forward power and reflected power bar graph indicated on the ADX 600 and also the plasma uh, LEDs turn on, those digital signals are interfaced and also the tuned LED is also interfaced in between the generator and the ADX 600.